I'm Pete Klino. I'm a professor of economics at Stanford. My name is Robert Moffat. I am the Krieger Eisenhower Professor of Economics at Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore. The University of Chicago in general is one of the leading social science universities in the world. It has the depth of scholarship and expertise that's really unrivaled anywhere else. There's no other place I would uh, like to spend time. And the visitor program at Becker Friedman, I've now engaged it twice. It's a wonderful program. You give a nice office, colleagues, administrative support. I uh, can't ask for a better place to visit. So I look forward to coming back as soon as I can. Visiting BFI is always a fabulous experience because it's really a vibrant place in terms of the faculty. I have a lot of collaborators from spending time in previous years at uh, University of Chicago and just new relationships that started after I left, like Cheng Tai She. And we just ran into each other at a you know, BFI event and started talking about mutual interests. And the next thing you know, we started writing a paper together. It's called Romer or Ricardo. The title is referring to Paul Romer and then David Ricardo. So David Ricardo is hundreds of years ago, but particularly known for countries trade with each other because they're good at doing different things. And Romer's thing was that, that what people are good at is evolving, is, is a, a function of what people invest in, in technological innovations. And so by asking Romer or Ricardo, we're, we're basically asking how much are people coming up with new things that they're good at and that's driving trade, as opposed to just there's existing things that multiple countries can produce and some of them are better at making that thing than other people. So an example of that would be China, which we estimate does a lot of creative destruction, meaning it's imitating products that are developed in the United States, Europe, Japan, and then producing cheaper versions, not necessarily higher quality versions, might even be lower quality versions, because labor costs are sufficiently low, they can be quite competitive. Um, so that gives you a whole dynamic view of the trade process that countries, some countries come up with something brand new, that's the Romerian innovation, and then other countries imitate or even improve on that, and that's the more Ricardian uh, competition. And what that helps us understand is just why some countries are rich and poor at a point in time, how much trade at a point in time is, is Romerian versus Ricardian, and also what drives the growth process. Even things like how much growth comes from domestic innovation versus foreign innovation. I did present a paper of my recent research at the uh, University of Chicago in, uh, in May 2022, and is studying the impact of the COVID pandemic on women and their labor market success. Uh, one of the uh, issues that's been noted repeatedly is that the pandemic had a very disproportionate negative impact on women, uh, much more than men uh, compared to past recessions and economic downturns. That's because women uh, tend to work in industries that were very heavily affected by the pandemic. For example, travel and hospitality, restaurants, hotels, and things like that. I mean, industries are industries where women are disproportionately employed. So what I did was I looked at the impact of that on loss of work for a year or two, uh, just not being able to work at all. And we know that if you can't work for a year or two, you lose some skills. You forget how to do your job. And then when you go back, it's very hard to get back into those same jobs, especially if educated women, they are not guaranteed a job. And sometimes their firms close altogether. So I studied the long run impact. I say long run only within two or three years. We're gonna see what the long run impact is coming forward in the next few years. But I found that they really, when they went back to work, they did not uh, achieve the same level of earnings and wages and jobs, good as jobs they had when they, um, uh, when they first left. Now, my work kind of ended in 2021. As we all know right now, things have flip-flopped <laughs> and suddenly there's a great shortage of uh, jobs and women are doing pretty well, except they still have a problem with childcare. Childcare is very expensive. So the main policy recommendation I have is that the government redouble its efforts to assist low women, middle class, as well as less educated women in, uh, in having childcare opportunities that are good for their work, but also good for their children. So it's quite an important issue and we'll see how things play out in the next few years.